so you guys have, you have 60, can I get your guys' attention? You have 60 seconds to come up with a team name, and it has to be something Halloween themed, something that I can remember easily. Ready, set, go. Okay, are we ready? Okay, what are you guys? <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, team two. Oh. Okay, these are pretty similar. What do we have back here? Ooh. Did you say pumpkin spice latte? <laughs> I like that one. That sounds delicious. What about you guys? Have you decided? Whoa. Left field. I like it. Okay, so the way that this Jeopardy game is going to work is each group is going to have, so this is our, our Jeopardy board. I'm going to pick on someone from this group to pick the first question. And then you'll have two minutes to come up with an answer. And if you answer it correctly, you get a point. If one of the other groups still has something to add to that answer that we think is valuable, then your group has an opportunity to get an additional point as well. So I'll go to the other groups after the group that asked the question and see if you guys have anything to add to that. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So just to describe what we have here, the first column is undergraduate research. So these are things that you're, you're going to want to keep in mind when you're talking to your mentee, things that you might not remember experiencing when you were a freshman just doing, starting to do research that are very relevant to, to the mentee that you're talking to. So this is just going to be kind of like us refreshing our brains about what it was like to just start research. Uh, connecting with your mentee, just general things to make it less awkward to be uh, having a conversation with your mentee, kind of breaking the ice type of things. Name that resource is what it sounds like. It's going to be Something that the mentee is telling you, and you have to decide where to refer them. Looking for signs. This one is kind of brainstorming how to read the mentee based on maybe a behavior that they have or something that they have um, that they're saying. And so we're going to kind of be isolating certain issues that we think the mentee might be having, like if it's a personal issue, an anxiety issue, and then how to kind of help them resolve that. And then wild cards. So this one might be kind of fun. I'm not going to give any hints about it. OK, so first group. Here, you guys get to pick. Whoa, going to the bottom. Okay. Okay, your mentee says, I'm trying to apply for jobs on campus, and I could use some help making my resume look more professional. Where should I go? No, so this group gets the first opportunity to answer. And if, if you have something else to add, you can get an additional point. So I'll, call, I'll ask if you guys have any other a, uh, answers after they go. Career services. Incur. Does everyone know where that is? So if your mentee has this issue, you can say that. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. I'm not going to be a stickler on that. But OK, I'm giving one point to the rotting pumpkins. Do any of the other <laughs> teams have anything to add? Yeah, Heidi. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Okay, you guys? Okay. It's online, it's, it's, it has lots of interesting information, um, career information online. Um, it's all run through a tool that you go to your careers and then you can actually like log in with your other stuff and then upload resumes, upload professional information, look through job, uh, job listings um, that are like really easy. Very good. Okay, so yeah, you guys might want to be taking notes and writing down these the resources that you don't know about that you could uh, offer to your mentee. Okay, awesome. Anything else? Okay, so we've all got great resumes. Okay, so let's move on to the next group. And I'm going to go back to the lattes. Which one would you like to pick? Wow. You guys like this column. 
I know you're probably not happy about this, but I'm over 21 years old, and sometimes I go out and have a couple drinks on Friday night. I don't want to drink and drive, but I can't afford a taxi. Are there other options to get a ride home? Okay, lattes. You, do you want some time? You can have a minute to think about it. You know? Okay, safe ride. Does everyone know what safe ride is? Nice. Okay. Okay, so the lattes have two points. They're in the lead. Do you guys have any other suggestions for rides home on a Friday night, assuming you're over 21? We're not going to condone drinking for anyone, but, and this probably won't happen, but yeah. Call a, Call a friend. That's good. Nice. Okay. That's your first point. What's your name again? Spooky? Spooky Spastics. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to the Smashing Pumpkins. What would you like to pick? Oh, no, don't look. Everyone close your eyes. Okay. Fifty. We're not overachievers. I know, you can tell. Okay, name five ways to show that you are actively listening to your mentee. And you can have a minute if you want. Yeah, that is really important. So listening to what someone says and then reiterating. So I think you said something like this, and this is how I can answer that question. Good. Okay, does anyone have any others? No? Another one that I've found is really good is if, if your mentee is saying something to you and they're kind of not really um, saying it eloquently and they're kind of stumbling, if you come, instead of just kind of agreeing and say, oh, yeah, I think I know what you're saying, Come back and say, is this what you're saying? Ask them. Try to clarify what they're trying to get across. Because they might be really nervous. They might not know exactly how to say it. But if you have a sense of where they're going, you can come back and say, OK, I think you're going this way, and this is how we can approach that situation. OK, anything else you guys can think about? Eye contact, very important. OK, so we haven't called. Who hasn't picked a question? You guys haven't picked a question yet, right? OK. Whoa, okay. Eye contact is a very important part of communication. To emphasize this point, you must now have a staring contest with Kevin. <laughs> Whoever blinks first loses. All right, Kevin, come up. Jason, you asked the question, so you have to do it. <laughs> okay, and let me, so if you don't win, you don't get the 50 points. No. <laughs> Indira, you can be the judge. On your mark, get set. Okay. I'll let you say go since you're judge. Go. You cannot blink. Eye contact is very important when communicating with your mentee. <laughs> wow. Oh, they're good. <laughs> oh, I think I saw a blink. Did I see a blink? <laughs> okay. 
Now you know, Jason, <laughs> eye contact is, is very important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Might give him the wrong impression if you do that with your mentee. <laughs> okay, yeah, so now you guys pick. Looking for signs for 50, okay. What are some signs that a mentee is partying excessively and that the behavior is negatively affecting their academic performance? If you see these signs, what would you do or say? You, can, you have a minute to think about it. Okay, we have an answer. Let's wait for him to listen up. Okay, listen up, guys. We have an answer here. Rotting pumpkins. So some of the signs are not showing up to your appointments on time, kind of looking tired, disinterested, falling behind on your coursework. Yeah. Okay, and then what would you suggest? Maybe you've got the exercise problems and you need to do them and that it would be good to just set up some time to do That's a great idea. So, sure that they don't realize it, that you're doing that. right, right. So, Linda and the group suggested that besides talking to me and Kevin about this being a, a possible thing to look out for, inviting them to come study with you late at night in the library and bring cookies, and make it fun instead of saying, "Don't do this." Say, "Hey, let's go do this stuff instead." Type of thing. I think that's a really great idea. Anyone? Do other groups have any ideas for that? Yeah. Oh, let's go to the movies. Yeah. Yeah. And just, like, redirect their attention. Right. Without letting them know it's weird. Good. So finding creative ways to divert them into more positive activities. I like it. Very good. Okay. So that's that was 40, right? Oh, no, that was 50. Gosh, rotting pumpkins. I know. It's kind of it's kind of intimidating. Okay. So... Next group, let's see, we went back to the lattes, I think. For 50, okay. What are the essential components of an undergraduate research project? You guys have a minute to talk about this. And other groups, you guys can brainstorm so you can come up with stuff as well. Okay, I think we have it. Um, so we said, like, you know, community project. You obviously, if like, you're looking to submit your project, whether it's a PowerPoint or a poster, mm -hmm. or something like that. right? So um, a finished product. And then where you take it, like, you know, is it a project format? Like, not just the badges, but the actual computers, or 
Okay, so distributing your findings. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's good. There are some more components. Yeah. Good. So looking at the methods and making sure that it's something you can actually accomplish. Yeah. That's a good one. Anyone else? Yeah, Logan. Interacting frequently with your Yeah. So interacting with your professor, making sure you guys are on the same page about the project. Anything else? Yeah, Linda. Say it again. Oh, funding. Looking for funding. Right, so making sure you have enough money to complete your project. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fine. We're open now. Everyone's getting points. <laughs> right. Yeah, setting a schedule, sticking to it, setting goals, accomplishing them. How about having a general understanding of how of the scientific method and how science is conducted from start to finish? That is something that's really important, and that's something that you guys might be in the middle of, and something that are the students in this program are going to see over the course of the year is how to start, what a project is, how to build the methods and find results, how to analyze your data, and how to present it all the way through to the end. So that's good. that's a pretty pretty essential component. Yeah, Jason. Uh, critically looking at literature. Yes. That's very good. So scientific reading, figuring out how to dissect scientific literature. Anything else, Kevin and Deer? Do you guys, can you guys add anything to that one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. I think we have Smashing Pumpkins next. They turn gray when they're clicked, but it's really hard to see that on this screen. Yeah, so these are all gray, and this one is gray. <laughs> so bottom row, and then this one. Say it again. Okay. What are some signs that a mentee is having trouble with time management and meeting deadlines? If you see these signs, what are two strategies you would suggest? I'll give you a minute. You guys good? Okay, we're good. Let's bring it in. Let's listen to what they have to say, see if they deserve their 40 points. Okay, does anyone know where in Waldo you can get, yeah? Academic Success Center in Waldo, okay, yeah, Linda. Oh, wow. Okay. 
So Dixon has coaches for students that help you deal with time management and, um, and stress. And you said also CAPS is a good one. OK, yeah. Right. Study buddies, yeah. Study buddies are really important. Study buddies and TAs. Just in general, just having a buddy to study with, yeah. Someone to keep you accountable for what you need to do, basically. Yeah, in the back. That's a good point. So even if a student wants to be a member of 100 different clubs, it doesn't mean they have the time to fulfill all the requirements of being in each of those clubs. So maybe think about which ones are most important to you. Yeah, Taylor. Right. Right. Yeah, so before you tell a student to go to a success center, have them bring you a list of everything that they, all their clubs, all their extracurricular activities, all their classes, and just talk them through what you, what amount of time you think that's going to require. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so tell them to do the little things first because it feels so good to cross something off your list. I do it with a big black pen. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, OK. And that's the Career Center? Academic Success Center, okay. So they'll sit down with you and again, look at all, all the things you have on your plate and tell you how to attack them. Yeah, Kevin. That's good advice. So Kevin's saying, ask them directly. Are you turning in your assignments? How are your exams going? Just so, you, so they don't have a way to kind of get around that, because they're not going to probably voluntarily give you that information. Yeah, Kyle. And then also uh, trying to be encouraging when they, when they say they haven't done exams or, or assignments. And, uh, be encouraging that it's not like, hey, you should have done this, but like, hey, like, how can I help you do this? Right. So instead of making them feel like a failure, say, so OK, well, it's right. Actually. That's a really good point. So make sure they know you're still on their side, you're still on their team, but you want to help them give the tools to do it differently. You're not, you're not, um, you, I mean, you can show a little bit that you're disappointed, right? I mean, we wrote in the manual that you can say, oh, well, I really want to see you, I want to see you doing better and turning in your assignments on time. So they know that, that that's what you're looking for, but also don't make them feel like they're a complete failure because that's just going to be kind of disheartening. Okay. I forgot, Jeopardy's supposed to be fun, so I brought candy. <laughs> candy break. Take some, pass them on. Okay, who's next? Is it you guys? Okay. Yeah. Okay, spooky spastics. What do you pick? For 40? What benefits do students gain from doing an undergraduate research project? I'll give you a minute to talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay, we have an answer. Yeah, we probably we so we're far off I think in endless opportunity. But let's say that essentially you got hands on application, you got networking, time management, professionalism, confidence, um, pretty much your connections are gonna grow throughout the whole entire future. Right, ne networking, time management, communication, um, what were the other ones you said? Hands on applications. Hands on applications, right. Those are good. Yeah, Tyler. Well, Yes. Right. Did you guys hear that one? Yeah. So one of the benefits is it's kind of like career clarification. You do a bunch of genetic work, and then you say, "Oh, I had I had no idea that I loved this so much." So that's that is a really good benefit. Yeah. I think it's interesting too in STEM because I started off in bioengineering, and through my undergraduate research, I decided that I was actually much more interested in like the science. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's really easy to say, oh, I really like chemistry, but until you're actually doing hands-on chemistry, how do you know what it's going to be like to be in the lab every single day doing chemistry? So that's a, that's a major benefit of undergrad research. Yeah, Tyler. It also makes you think critically a lot. Like, I feel like sometimes classes, you just flipping around and trying to figure out, like, okay, what are the next the things you learn in class, your coursework, and you're directly applying them to real life situations. Yeah. So not only do you learn what you do like, you learn what you don't like. And I think something that we should all be wary of is if you see your mentee um, not happy with their undergrad research experience, are you guys, you guys hearing what I'm saying? If your mentee comes in and they're not happy with their experience, you can tell them it's okay to change undergraduate research experiences. We don't want them to be doing an experience that they're not happy doing because this program is going to be a drag. You have to go into the lab every day and you're not enjoying it. We're going we're gonna to try to connect them with someone that they're more compatible with. Yeah. Um, I'd say it makes you more of a mastery based learner. Yeah. Um, you want to complete a project for your own enrichment to the goal rather than to get it. Right, exactly. So you're taking charge of your project. You're not doing it to get an A plus on your exam. You're doing it because you want to be a master of this research that you're doing. That's a really good point, Jason. Okay, everyone got points on that one. Good job. Okay, so we have spooky, spooky spastics next, I think, to pick. Oh, you just went. Okay, so now we're starting again at the rotting pumpkins. And now the bottom row is gone. This is gone, this is gone, and this is gone. It is. Identifying things that you have in common with a mentee is an excellent way to try to get the student engaged and build trust. What are some ways to identify interests that you share in common? I'll give you a minute.
Okay, we're out of minutes. Do we have an answer from the rotting pumpkins? Good. Good. So directly ask, what are your interests? That's good. And show that you're interested in their interests as well. Good. Yeah, Jason. Um, meeting over meals. Oh, meeting over meals. And why would that? Why would that help? It's just it's more of a relaxed environment. Everyone likes being just in a comfortable. <laughs> right. That's a great idea. So meet for froyo. And as you're eating froyo, go, oh my god, I love chocolate as well. That's the best. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, Linda. Right, that's a good point. So Linda's saying, instead of saying, oh, what do you do in your free time? They're going to say, oh, what free time? I don't know what that is anymore. Instead of saying something like that, you should say, what did you used to do when you had free time? Because that will open up some more interesting conversation. That's a great point. OK, anyone else have anything? You guys, you guys are giggly. You have something. <laughs> and then you can talk about your, your common disinterests. <laughs> what dorm food is the most disgusting? Anything else? Oh, I like that. I really like that. Because if you say, oh, well, let's go to Chipotle, and they don't like Mexican food, then you're not going to have an interest there. If you say, let's go, do you want to meet at this place, this place, this place, or this place, you know what their interest is because they picked it. And now you can build on that. Very good, very good. OK. That was rotting pumpkins, right? Oh, can I say Okay, yeah. Right. So maybe give an option. We can go out to lunch or we can go on a walk. And then they can feel, you don't have to ask if they have money or whatever. You just, they'll pick the one they feel comfortable with. That's a really good suggestion. Okay, should we move on to the next one? All right, what do you guys want? We're on lattes, right? Lattes? The only 40 left is wild card. <laughs> You're going to do it? <laughs> I promise there's no more staring contests. <laughs> OK, wild card. This experience is good for you, too. What are the benefits that you guys are gaining as peer mentors? Let me give you a minute. <laughs> Okay, I think we are ready. Let's hear what the lattes have to say. I'm abbreviating your names now. <laughs> the lattes. <laughs> the rot. <laughs>
Okay, so personal growth and learning, educating yourself about how you can educate your mentee. So finding out what the resources are so that you can, you can um, give them to the mentee. That's great, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Right, yeah. So you're learning now how to communicate with your faculty mentor when you do your research, but now you're going to have to play a whole new role and learn how to communicate in that new role. Good. Yeah, Logan. Uh, maybe your patience and listening skills. Yeah, patience. Right, yeah, like the older brother kind of thing. You need to be patient because they're learning too. Yeah, Jason. I'd say networking. College is a pretty unique time where you have a lot of intellectuals in one place. Yep. Yeah, networking. That's always a good thing, especially in STEM fields. Anything else? You guys have anything to add? I don't think you got a point for that one. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're going to be working in research labs, so they'll learn about their science. Right, yeah. So you're just learning about more research projects. And that's always good. Exposure to science is generally a good thing for everyone. Okay, I like it. All right. So that was for 40. I think all of our 40s are gone now. Now you're going to have to start dipping into the 30s. Name that resource for 30. Is that what you said? Okay. I'm having really bad anxiety attacks from stress and some personal issues that I'm dealing with. I want to talk to someone that I don't know, someone that won't judge me. So they don't want to talk to you, basically. <laughs> That's a nice way of <laughs> Okay, you'll have a, you have a minute to talk if you need that long. Okay, are you ready? The big one is CAPS. CAPS. Support groups that are off campus, Com like community support groups? Yeah. Okay. Depending on, on what the right, yeah, if it's a really specific issue that the campus doesn't have a resource for, which is probably, hopefully not the case, but there would be a community okay. service, yeah. CAPS can offer this direction. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Go talk to someone at CAPS and they can say, okay, we'll re refer you. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if they say, I don't want to talk to you about this, you can say, is there another peer mentor or faculty advisor that you would feel comfortable talking with? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So a 24-hour hotline where you don't have to show your face on any re Yeah. Okay. That might be attractive to certain students that are nervous about needing that help. Good call. Anything else on that one? Okay. Yeah. Good point. Okay, I think we're moving on to the spooky spastics. Is that right? So the only 30 missing now is this one. No, that's the only one you, that's the one you can't take. <laughs> Always going for the challenge. <laughs> questions you can ask a mentee in order to break the ice. So imagine that the mentee is walking in very quiet and doesn't want to talk.
Okay, do we have our three? You guys ready to listen to the three? Cal, you good? Okay, here we go. Ooh, I like that. Tell uh, an em embarrassing story about yourself. And we also said two truths and a lie. Did you see that? What's that? How do you play that? They, you, they write down three statements about themselves, and you have to guess which one was false. <laughs> okay, tell them to write down three statements about themselves, and then you decide which one of the three is false. That's great. <laughs> okay, very creative. And then we said a lot of you say if you got stranded on an island, what would you do? If you're stranded on an island. What's one thing you would bring? Okay. Those are way better than the ones I was thinking. Way better than the Yeah. The normal icebreaker, which you see more uncomfortable icebreakers with them. So Linda was saying, what's your favorite TV show? That would be a, a safe one, probably. Maybe not as exciting as the stranded one. Yeah. You could tell a joke. Tell a joke. What joke would you tell? You should tell a joke. Why does Snoop Dogg always carry an umbrella? Why does Snoop Dogg always carry an umbrella? Faux drizzle. Faux <laughs> drizzle. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back here. Oh yeah. That is such a good point. So d instead of saying, oh, would you like cereal? And they're going to be like, yeah. <laughs> and then they're going to be like, do you like milk? <laughs> and then they're going to be like, yes. So you might want to say, what do you eat for breakfast? What time do you eat breakfast? You know, things like that. Obviously, you probably wouldn't talk about breakfast. But yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> OK. That was good. OK, we're back to rotting pumpkins. There's three more 30s available. Nope, this one's still open, and these two are open. Wild card for 20? I'm only going to be giving 30 seconds for you guys to find answers now because we're running out of time. Okay. As a peer mentor, it is important to recognize how you can be of most help to your mentee, as Kevin said earlier. How would you go about trying to assess this? 30 seconds. This is our, this should have been the 51. Yeah. The, eye, the eye staring contest was way easier than this. <laughs> okay, time out. Let's go. What do you have? Right. Right. So Linda's kind of saying, do a general assessment of where the student is at. Ask if they're doing extracurricular activities. Ask what are they doing in their classes. And then this way, we can kind of isolate which issues they're dealing with. So you might say, are you feeling really stressed out? Or you, you, you could look for signs of stress, and then that way you could assess that that would be the way you would be most helpful. Good. Yeah, so specifically assess where they're at with their undergraduate research and see if they need help in that way. Good. Okay. That was for 20. All right. We've got the lattes. Um, undergrad research, connecting, and looking for signs. Undergrad research for 30. What were the challenges you faced when you first started your undergrad research? You have 30 seconds.
Okay, lattes. You guys have something? Yeah, okay, lattes, here we go. Right, so finding funding is a challenge and getting up to speed with the specific research methods you're going to need to use for your project. So the reason I'm asking you this question is because these are the things that your mentee is going to be doing and dealing with. And so you need to do, a, as Kyle would say, a Vulcan mind meld with them and really put yourself in their place again. Yeah, what were you going to say, Anders? Did you have your hand up? Oh, oh no, that was you. I did. Um, yeah, just the initial just really quick. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, so scientific literature that you were working with, yep. And that's going to be, that's going to be something that your mentee would love to hear, I'm sure. Yeah, and then I was immediately tweeted, like, add some to the topic. Right. And so it's a really steep learning curve. Steep learning curve, yeah. I went through that. Right. Everyone's up against a steep learning curve, and talking to your men your faculty mentor is intimidating, but it can be done. Yeah, Logan. It can also be hard to connect with people inside your lab, right? And so because they're often higher up. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Sometimes you're just willing to go to lab managers to kind of help out there. They're there for you, and they want to help the lab itself. So if you're showing that you want your hard workers, you can dedicate right. a lot of time, and they're going to want that in your lab. Yeah, they want to see that you're there. You're devoted to the material, and asking questions, I think, is really something that they see is really good. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I read all the papers that he had. Hopefully you didn't uh, publish that much, huh? Yeah. Right, and this is really good advice to give your mentees. So he's saying, go look up the grad students that are in your lab, look up the postdocs, and read what they're doing because it's very relevant to what the research is doing. Yeah, Linda. Um, I know some people have like special experiences when they first start doing research. It's already hard enough to um, what kind of barriers? Like language barriers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right, and jargon, I think, is a big problem because there are terms in your program that you hear over and over and over and over again, and it's a protein name or a process that coming in, you're like, you've said that 50 times in the past five minutes, and I have no idea what that word is. So ask them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point. That's great. So do that initial assessment of where you think they're at so that you can not overwhelm them. Yeah, Logan. Right. Yeah, so Logan suggests read a paper with your mentee because they're going to say, what's an abstract? And you can say, well, let's read it together, and then we'll talk about what it is. That's a great suggestion. Okay, we only have two minutes, so should we maybe just do one more question? Okay, who, let's see, where were we at? Is it lattes next? I just gave the...
Oh, yeah. Okay. How does that work? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't think that's fair. <laughs> okay, what would you like to pick? <laughs> Looking for signs for 30. What are some signs that a mentee is having trouble adjusting to life without their family? If you see these, how could you help? Okay, let's do the answer to this, and then I'm going to give wild card for 10 to the sp spooky spastics because they are losing. So let's say, what is, what is the answer you guys came up with for this one? That's a great suggestion. So look for signs. They're, they haven't done their laundry. They're eating ramen every night because they don't know how to cook anything, or um, they miss their best friend and they can't stop talking about it, things like that. So how would you help? Right. Yeah, so it sustains uh, like a community, basically, finding them somewhere where they can fit in. That's great. Yeah. Right. Right. That's great. So if they have a certain cuisine that they're really missing and it's not available in the dorms, you might say, well, let's learn how to cook one of those dishes. That's a great idea. Okay, Spooky Spastics, you get wild card for 10 um, because I'm helping you out because you guys aren't winning. <laughs> and I'm sorry about it. <laughs> Name three roles that you do not play as a peer mentor. Okay, what do we have? Um, we have not their psychologist. Not their psychologist, you're not trained. Um, Good. We have you know, not their mom or dad telling them what to do with their interaction. Right, you're not going to do their laundry for them, for example. Drinking buddy, good. You're not their drinking buddy. That's a really good one, yeah. What else? Right, you're not their tutor or, your, or their academic advisor. You haven't been trained to tell them what classes they need to get their major done. You might suggest things, but then also say, also, I'm going to refer you to your academic advisor. Good. What else? I heard some other things that were entertaining that are true, and I saw a high five about it. Yeah, it's not your girlfriend or boyfriend. That is just something we should get out there. It's a, you wanna, and this goes back to the professionalism that Kevin talked about earlier. You're probably, you're not going to date your mentee. Anything else? All right, good job, you guys. I'll tally up scores, but candy for everyone. Good job.